I do this for a living, you still getting used to it. It's all or nothing for my music, don't abuse it, lose it. What's up guys, it's your boy Bryce aka North Carolina's favorite California transplant and we are back. Yes, it is a very, very gloomy, rainy Sunday right now so there will be no shooting going on today for me. Um, so I'm going to mix things up a little bit for you guys. I'm going to show you guys how I edited this shot. I'm going to be getting back to my roots, I think, for my photography and uh, going back into Photoshop with some photo manipulations. Like, uh, you know, uh, that's what made me fall in love with photography in the first place. So I think I'm going to start getting back to those roots. Um, if you watched my last video, you saw that Shannon was in town earlier this month and we did some great stuff. And what you didn't see in that video was the last set that we did, which is this right here. Um, just kind of a Harry Potter themed lingerie type fun shoot, whatever. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how I edited this shot right here. So we're going to go from this to that. And I'm going to show you guys how I did it. Let's get it. All right, guys, I'm going to talk about some things that are going to be used in this video, just so you guys have an idea about it before we get to it. Uh, as far as hardware wise, I'm using the XP Pen Artist 16 Pro. It's a 15.6 1080p display tablet, very similar to the Wacom Cintiq. Um, I moved over from just a normal Wacom tablet up to the XP Pen about a month ago, and I love it. Um, software wise, we're going to be using Capture One Pro instead of Lightroom, but you can do a lot of these things in Lightroom. I just prefer Capture One because I'm a Sony shooter and the version of Capture One for Sony cameras is extremely cheap compared to the full blown version. So I switched over. Um, of course, we're going to be using Photoshop. I'll be using Photoshop CC as my version. Um, if you're using a version other than CC, you may not have some of these features. So you're going to have to find a workaround for it or, you know, possibly look into upgrading it. As far as plugins go, we're going to be using the ImageNomic Portraiture plugin um, that works in Photoshop to do some skin smoothing. Um, and that's about it, guys. First thing that I typically do with my uh, rotation or my round tripping out of a um, program like Lightroom or Capture One is I do some local adjustments. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna crop this photo down just a little bit. So we're gonna grab our crop tool and we're just gonna bring this down just a little bit if it wants to let me do it. There we go. So we're gonna crop in just a little bit tighter. And we're gonna cut Shannon right above her knee um just a little quick tip about cropping you never crop at the joint so you don't cut a knee in half you don't cut off elbows um cropping at the top of the head's okay as long as you don't move into the forehead i do that a lot for my headshots but try to avoid it we're going to accept that and the next thing we're going to do is we are going to edit with and we're going to send this into photoshop all right, guys, so we're in Photoshop now. So I'm just going to make a new layer real quick. And I'm going to grab my brush tool. And let's change the color to red, something that we can see. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this background because of stuff like that and this baseboard right here. And next thing that we're going to do is let's change our color to green. We're just going to smooth out some skin texture, especially here and here. Just typical stuff. Now, what I actually do in my photo manipulations is I, I over smooth. So I'm going to go to the extreme with the smoothing um, because I want her skin to be perfect. No pores. I don't care about pores. I'm blowing the pores completely out because that's how I, I want my pictures to look surreal and very 3D. So the next thing we're going to do is let's grab another color. We'll go blue. We'll go in and let's see. We'll fix some blemishes, if there are any. Maybe come in here and get like some of these stray hairs. Possibly, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have pink, and we're gonna dodge and burn. So we're gonna come in here, and we're gonna do our face like that, and then we're literally just gonna come in here and hit these shadows like that, and really like accentuate 
the uh, contrast between the highlights and the shadows, and that's really going to give your picture a crazy 3D look. All right, let's get started. So, first time doing this, guys, on camera, so bear with me. I'm a lot faster, and it's a lot easier when no one's looking. All right, so first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run portraiture. So we got portraiture. I've got some settings going on right here. If you guys ever want to copy them, just pause the video. My portraiture plugin puts everything onto a new layer. As you can see over here. So this is what is being affected. And I usually turn my background layer off and put a layer mask on. Grab my brush tool. Make sure my foreground color is black. And what I'm going to do is go in and take out everything that I want to stay sharp. So I want her hair to stay sharp, her lips, her eyelashes. I'm going to remove it off of her tattoos and any clothing item. So I'm going to fast forward through this, guys, so you guys don't have to sit here and wait for me to do it. All right. See you guys in a second. All right, guys, so we're back. So after I get done with um, masking off the pieces that I don't want to be affected by the uh, smoothing software, the smoothering, smoothing, smoothing software, um, I go ahead and turn my background layer back on. Um, and then I zoom in just a little bit just to make sure that I don't have anything going soft on me. Like you can see her hair looks pretty good. Here, I'll turn this off so you can see it. That's off. That's on, zoom in a little bit so you can see it more. It's off, that's on. So this software does an amazing job, I love it. So basically I zoom in just enough, not too far, just enough to make sure that um, the things that I want sharp are still sharp. And I'm still on um, the new layer that was made and I'm still in the layer mask and I'm scared on my brush tool. So I'm gonna resize. I know this doesn't really matter to a lot of people, but it matters to me. Um, I go in and I get those fingertips because I do not want her fingernails blending into her finger. So I do that, check everything else. Everything else looks good. Perfect. So typically if I was doing a normal portrait, I'd come down here and grab my opacity uh, slider and move this down probably somewhere depending on how well the uh, the client or the model takes care of their skin um, I'll probably be somewhere around um, somewhere between 30 and 50 percent just kind of depends on the portrait that I'm taking and how many pictures that I'm ad actually editing like that to see how fast I want to go but for this one we're just going to leave the opacity at 100 full strength because I want her skin to look extremely smooth um, it's just going to add a new dimension to the photo once we're finished. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Command E, which is gonna flatten all my layers down to another, to uh, just the background layer, save all those changes. And next thing I'm gonna do is run my action for frequency separation. Um, I will try to put that somewhere where I can give it to you guys. I'm pretty sure I took it from Flern, Aaron Nace over at flern.com. I'm pretty sure he had a free download for it. Um, but I'll try to put that somewhere and leave a link down below um, in the description so that you guys can go download that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and look for any blemishes and remove them. I'm not going to get into detail with frequency separation. There are plenty of videos out there. I might actually make a video for you guys just to explain it the way that I understand it because I, I've watched so many videos that explained it and I didn't understand what they were talking about. So. That's what I'm here for, to explain it to you guys and talk to you guys like normal peoples. All right. So I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Now that that's done, actually, I'm going to fix this spot real quick. Get my flow down. Way down, 3%, 2%, 3%, 2%, whatever it's going to get me. Grab this color. Soft brush. Mm. 
and then I'm just going to brighten up this corner. Cool. You guys might not be able to see that um, just because of video and recording and all that technology stuff. But what I did right there is there was a blemish right here. And, you know, it's not never just uh, just a spot. It always darkens out as it goes away from it. So what I wanted to do right here is just brighten this spot right back up so that you couldn't tell that I removed the blemish. So there is skin. Easy peasy. You guys got it. All right. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to close my skin folder. I'm going to make a flattened copy of it. So it's command alt E. And what that does is it flattens everything, but it doesn't flatten it down to a layer. It flattens it and creates a new layer so that if for some reason I mess up, I still have everything that I worked on down here. So basically what I'm going to do is going to cut those off. And since we are, since I skipped it, let's go ahead and replace this background. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select that color. I'm actually going to go a little bit darker. So I'm going to select that color just so I have it. Uh, and Photoshop just updated this new select tool called Select Subject. And it's freaking amazing. So it goes in and it finds what it thinks is a person and selects it for you. Boom. That's crazy. So we're going to do that. We're going to layer mask. Boom. All right. Let's actually back up one step and let's go in there and mess with this selection a little bit more. So I'm going to go select a mask. All right, there we go. I'm going to use the refine edge tool just to get in here and help this selection out a little bit more. And all I'm doing is painting around the edges of the hair so that Photoshop can go back in and readjust my mask. Um, I'm not terribly concerned about how well this does it because we're just going to make the background blue again anyway. So I'm just going to go through here and fix some of these spots. All right, got that where I want it. I'm just going to apply that. And I'm going to create a new layer. I'm dragging underneath that one we just worked on. And I'm going to fill it with this blue color. Boom. There we go. I actually don't like that color. I'm going to make it a little darker. Boom. There we go. That works. All right. So we got that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shape with my ellipse tool holding shift to get a perfect circle spacebar to drag and hold I'm holding spacebar to move it where I want it but I'm still holding on shift to keep that perfect circle so I'm gonna let go there I'm gonna change that fill to white and now that's in between um, our layer with Shannon on it and our new background color so I've got that lined up where I want it. And the next thing I'm going to do is blur the crap out of it. Let's see. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. It's telling me because it's a smart object um, that I won't be able to mess with it. Not a smart object. Yeah, a smart object. So I'm just going to rasterize it. I don't really care. All right. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blur it like crazy. Boom. So I blurred it all the way and you can see there's before, there's after, and you got a nice little layer that you can move around and put where you want. So that looks about good. Cool. So we got all of that. I'm just going to flatten all of that. Um, again, we still have everything that we worked on before. so. We're good to go. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to use the liquify tool. I know I didn't mention this earlier. I kind of forgot, but I'm just going to use the liquify tool just to shape her just a little bit much, a, a little bit much, <laughs> just a little bit more. 
um, just to kind of give it that more of a surreal look to it. So let's hop into that and I'll be right back. All right, so we're done with that. Now, next thing we're going to do is dodge and burn, and I've got an action for that. So basically, all I'm doing is coming down here to uh, the little half-filled circle, and I'm adding in curves, layer adjustments, and I'll delete that, and I do two of them. Um, on the first one, I grab somewhere up here, and I pull it up extremely high. Command-I to invert that layer mask. I come down to this bottom one. In the opposite side, I pull down real low. Command I to invert that. And I start with my shadows first because um, it's typically like outlining uh, your subject. So it makes it a lot easier. Um, and usually I will grab these two and group them together. And I'll duplicate this group before I make those changes. So I jumped ahead of myself a little bit there, but it's okay. If you do it this way, then all of your adjustments will be even, which is something that I typically don't do in... It doesn't really matter, but you know, it's just something to be a little more consistent with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dodge and burn her hair, her face separately from the rest of her body and maybe her clothes, but I might just add the clothes in with the body. So I need one for hair, one for the face and one for the rest of her. So I'm just going to command J two times. I'm going to come in and I'm going to name these. This is going to be hair. This is going to be face. This is going to be body. Oops. All right. So we're going to go into here to the hair. And typically with the hair, you don't need to burn. You just need to dodge. So we'll zoom in here. And painting with white to reveal. Make sure you bump your flow back up if you've got it low. And basically what I'm doing is going in here and looking for the shine that's on Shannon's hair right here. So you can see right here, you can see that there's shine already there. So I'm just going to add this in to the extreme. And I'll show you guys how to make this look better. All right. Um, I'm just going to finish this up real quick. All right. So we're back. And as you can see, that's very extreme. Um, but that's okay. That's what you want so that you can see what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this layer style. I'm going to hold alt and I'm going to pull these triangles apart and until I get what I like. And the next thing I'm going to do is blur this layer. And I'm just going to keep moving my slider until it looks more realistic. All right, cool. That works. And I'm going to drop the opacity down just a little bit. And that's before and that's after. So we'll close this. Uh, like I said, you uh, unless they have a lighter uh, color hair, like a, maybe a blonde or something like that, you really don't need to burn in this situation. But what you would do in the burn would be the same thing. We just go into these darker areas right here. And it'll really make your hair look extremely shiny and 3D. Um, so that's 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 why I do that. So let's move on to the face. The face is a little bit more important. I'll show you guys how to do that. Again, I'm going to start with burning because it kind of gives me a guideline on how I want the face to look. All right, cool. So we're going to zoom out and I'm going to let you guys see what I, what that does to her face. So this is before, this is after. You see how that, that's, that's crazy, right? So it really wraps her face in that light and gives you that three-dimensional look. So the next thing we're going to do is, and, and the reason why I do my shadows is because now look how easy it is to see highlights and where they should go because that's so extreme. So I'm just going to come in here. And pretty much do the same thing I did with the shadows. All right, so let's start with shadow. So I'm going to turn off my highlights layer. I'm going to come into here to my shadows. I'm going to grab my opacity slider and I'm going to slide until it just pretty much looks good to me. So let's see, go here. 
Make sure you're cutting it off and on as you are changing your opacity so that you can see the differences. So 50% is looking about where I want that. All right, cool. So we're gonna turn back on our highlights. Highlights are gonna come way down. So I'm gonna pull this down about 40%, cut it off and cut it back on. That works for me. This is the face before, this is the face after. So, I mean, it's just like when you use your strobe, guys. You can really shape someone's face if you understand how light hits it and understand how the eye perceives shadows and highlights. So, there's the face. All right, guys. So, you've seen me do the hair. You've seen me do the face. I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of this and do the body. And we'll get this video almost finished. So, I'll see you guys in a second. Is their, their color balancing and color editing uh, tab does some really crazy stuff so you can come in here and do selective color like you can in Lightroom mess with the saturations lightness you can do some hue shifting smoothness is pretty cool so it, it basically is um, how much of a sing of that color range do you want to mess with or do you want it to bleed into green or blue or red, wherever you're at um, so basically I went in there and added these settings and boom, there you go. So this is my finished product. Glad you guys came out and hung out with your boy on this rainy Sunday afternoon. Um, if you guys like this kind of video, make sure you guys give me a thumbs up, head down to the comments, let me know what you think. I'm going to try to do one of these at least once a week, just so you guys can see how it's done. Um, if you guys got any questions on how I'm doing things or you saw something that you're a little confused about, please let me know. Uh, maybe in the next video, I'll go in a little bit more in depth about that. But until the next time, guys, <laughs> you know what you got to do for them four dollars. Oh, you got to holla. All right, y'all. I'm out. Peace.